Hey everybody! How are you guys? Welcome to our new live stream for Space Lords. I am Hernan, I'm a technical game designer for Space Lords and today I have with me Berto. Yeah. Hi everyone, I am a member of the design team here on Space Lords and it's a pleasure to stay here today. It's a pleasure for me to, <laughs> to have you here. So, uh, what is it that we'll be doing today in our new live stream? Today we have something uh, special, something a bit different for you guys. And today we'll be playing a few of the levels or the missions for the game. Yeah. We'll be playing three of them, you know, like the, th the first three that we ever developed, if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which are Hanging by a Thread, yeah, um, correct. In Shock, and uh, Breath of Hope. Yeah. And, you know, Berto will be the pro... Yeah. player here yeah <laughs> you will be the, the one that will be, will be playing this i'll try ones. to do my best i'm sure you will berto is way better <laughs> than me at, at space or so well, well. and while berto keeps playing i will i will give you some insight on the some behind the scenes insight on the development of, of each one of the missions and as we do that we'll try to uh, have some of your questions your live questions here uh, brought to us so maybe we can answer some of them and you know, afterwards, when we finish playing all those levels, uh, we have a world exclusive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we have a world, world exclusive. Berto has a world exclusive, so yeah. he will be rebuilding it uh, after we play. And after that, we'll go to question time, full question time. And after that, we will have to say goodbye. Yeah. So right now, should we start? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Are we ready now, Berto? So let's okay. go and try to find some match on hanging well, by a thread. We are going to. Play Hanging by a Thread? Yeah, we've been playing Hanging by a Thread for quite a long time now, right? Yeah, yeah, since I, I, I am here on, on Mercury's team, this is the, 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 the mission that I, I played uh, the most. <laughs> you sound without, like, like without traumatized. Without. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> because I, I remember all, all the times that I have to play this mission, and, and this is uh, one of the most played uh, uh, here. Yeah, it was really hard to get it right so we had to make a lot of iterations on the on this uh, yeah. mission and yeah I will I will get more into detail as soon as we uh, jump into a match so yeah I think, oh, I think we have something from someone, Quanrian79, world exclusive, that's right, that's how we roll. This is a world exclusives on every stream. So yeah, what what about the cup though? Which cup? What are they talking about? The I don't cup? see any cup though. I don't your, know. Your cup? My cup, you mean like, yeah. like the cup, oh, the cup. Oh, this well. one here. It's oh. very heavy. It's very heavy. Yeah. You don't need to work out when <laughs> you have this sort of cups. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, Abolop, uh, Abolop asked to us that what is in the in this cup? What's in this cup? That's a really yeah. good question. But that, I mean, I could tell you guys, but that's not today's world exclusive. So no, I'd no, rather no. keep the secret, sorry. Yeah. Maybe some other <laughs> stream could focus on the cup only. <laughs> so yeah. So, who, uh, show us a bit of uh, who will try to play on this, uh, on this, uh, uh, on this stream. Like, uh, which are the characters that you got yeah, ready for um, today's matches? I want to play with Alicia because it's, it's my favorite uh, space lord. Why is it your favorite space lord, though? Because I always saw you like playing with Alicia. Yeah, 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 for yeah. So many uh, times. I like the, the faster uh, characters on, on a game like this. Uh, I like the, the the mobility on the on the mission. And I think uh, Alicia is one of the most uh, uh, characters that that uh, have this this specification for me. Um, um, I, I like the special ability, the wall jump, for the verticality that uh, mm -hmm. that the character uh, has on on all the missions. Um, and this is the way that that I I choose. This, we have a, we have a match, this okay. space lord. So it's more about the uh, uh, speed and yeah. the frantic gameplay that you like, right? Yeah. Like being really quick. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. I like to run on the. <laughs> really, I, I'd rather have like slower characters though. 
Alicia really gets me really stressed when I ah. play Alicia. Like really nervous, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. if you're like the antagonist or something. <laughs> you can be spotted uh, at all times. It makes me really, really nervous. So I think uh, it seems like we found a match. Oh, oh. I'm unfailed, but who's that player? <laughs> so yeah, let's try to queue again. You could try to queue in uh, all three levels, though, because the order is yeah. really not that important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just okay. go for it. Let's go. We are lucky. Yeah. Maybe we can bring. I don't know. It's hard to bring questions. Wow. Because, oh, that Again. was quick. Here we have another chance to play. Yeah, we, right now we are hanging by a thread ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I hope this match kicks in. This is my first stream. Oh, yeah. I'm How not, do you feel, I, by the I, way? I want to, to make it right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not your fault, though. Yeah, don't worry. I know. Nah, but if you lose, it, then it will be your fault. Yeah, yeah. So you're really not supposed to oh. lose. Oh! That's too bad. Waiting again. Hey, so we have Probable Lone Ranger here. I think that's how you say Probable 1 or Probable... I don't know. Probable. Hi, everyone. Hi, how are you guys? Hi. Okay. okay, we have Breath of Hope. Breath I'm of hope. totally fine with Breath of Hope. Okay, we have more Lucky. Lucky, Lucky. With <laughs> lucky, Lucky. <laughs> with I, this. I oh, still uh, have nightmares with yeah. that. <laughs> with <laughs> that thing. With that thing, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I Let's see if you can grab Alicia. Yeah. Or if not, you have like a second option, right? I, I try to do my best. Be the. You have to be really quick. That quick. On the selection character. Yeah. Okay, you got it right. And a breath of hope, I, I think, is the is the best mission for Alicia. Well, how, how so? Why? Yeah, because the special ability of the wall jump and all the walls that we have on, on this mission, I think hmm. that that is the, the best. Oh, oh, oh we, we have, have an have antagonist, an antagonist here. <laughs> and let's hope we, we survive at least for a while and so I, that we can play in some of the And inside. I love that we have a random guy playing with us. Oh, literally a random guy. Yeah. That's really nice to meet you, random guy. <laughs> we, so, wanna, we wanna let the... Yeah, let's let them choose, I mean. Yeah. I think we, you know, we know the cinematics. The cutscenes, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can totally, if I close my eyes, I can totally yeah. like remember each one of the uh, so phrases for them. Okay. That's crazy clips there. The wormhole event that will be, uh, you know, it will be active until the end of this month. So, yeah. so here you are. This is a breath of hope. So, you know, when we were developing this level, um, we w we tried to do something uh, different, oh. you know. In comp oh man, he got you right. <laughs> so yeah, the thing with this level is that we had to build like uh, some procedural system that would uh, choose among uh, different kind of layouts of the level. So there there's like three phases in during this first part of uh, Breath of Hope, you know. And every time you proceed to the cutscene and the next phase king kicks in is like the whole scenario changes with it and that was uh technically speaking it was a really uh complex thing to achieve and you know what happens actually that we found during our plastic play testing sessions is that some of the uh, players wouldn't even notice until uh after some matches because the layout of the different uh, you know, variations of the levels are so complicated. It's kind of like elaborate. So uh, it's kind of hard to notice the change unless you kind of memorized some of the different layers. So you realize, oh, this, this cover here wasn't here. Or what about the ceiling over here? So for a while, we thought in giving each one of the permutations like a distinctive color or something like that so that people would uh, you know, realize uh, something has changed, but you know, at the end we felt it it was kind of cooler for it to be more subtle, and also since the uh, you know, like the local civilization of the broken planet has this really uh, you know clean aesthetic, uh, you know, like all the buildings are the, like the the color palettes are really uh, 
you know, uh, like simple and, and, and clean, you know, it's, everything is, ab is about you know, like this kind of bluish or greyish stone in contrast with these uh, uh, golden uh, motifs ev everywhere. So we felt like we really shouldn't uh, change that because we really like the, uh, uh, the mood of it. So yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I got kind of got lost on that, but I think it, that was uh, pretty much everything. And also, what we will try to take care of in this map is that uh, you know the context of, of it. It's really important for us so that you don't feel like you're being trapped, like in a in a random arena, so that you can shoot guys. So we try to uh, uh, have some uh, environmental storytelling. And you know, if you look like into the outside parts of the level, you can uh, get a really uh, quick glimpse of the, you know, narrative context of what's going on. Like this, you can see this Wardock uh, staffies or fatties, you know, uh, on the background, and some and some looter ships, you know, going back and forth. So you can easily understand, like, oh, they are basically raiding all this place and getting all the Aleph, and you know. And that's uh, that directly connects with the uh, uh, playable objective of the mission, which is you know like stealing Aleph from the looters that, that are trying to uh, to get away with that. So these kind of little details, we couldn't uh, do, uh, we couldn't always do these kind of details, you know, because it, they really depend on the mission. And also, uh, you have to, uh, we had to develop them after the missions were you know like coded, just in case they wouldn't change. So whenever we had time, like in this uh, in this level, it was really cool to give this kind of a stronger context, you know. And also, there's a really I don't know, like uh, some um, some people sometimes when I when I speak with gamers, like people get surprised because of the way the different systems work. And you know, in this stage, it was the first one, and I think it's the only one actually in which some AI enemies, you know, these looters, run away by getting into ships. And you know, this is. Just like a funny uh, uh, info bit here, you know, like we already had built a really complex system in which, you know, there's like a, there's like a really uh, complex uh, piece of, of uh, technical code, you know, that let, would let, you know, like ships come and troops would get out of the ships. And we, we used that extensively through many missions in the game. But on this, on this one, it was like the opposite processes, you know, like AI is getting away on, on, on ships. And even though it may sound like the same thing, it, it was actually like a huge amount of work because the system that we developed really wasn't uh, meant for that. So it's actually like a new, a smaller and simpler system that we use so that AIs can get into the ships and, you know, get away from them. So, you know, I'm just commenting on this because sometimes, you know, when you see a game and you see ships, it's like, oh, Probably it's the same code or the same thing going on, but sometimes it is. But sometimes it really, it, it's really not. And that this is one of these rare cases in which, for for whatever technical reasons, we really had to develop something from the ground up, only to give a really stronger context for this mission. You know, because we could have just had the looters just you know like go away through some hole in the ground, but we felt like uh, story-wise it was way more coherent for them to just. You know, jump into the into these uh, ships and just you know go straight to the uh, fatty on the ground on the on the background, and also it gave uh, stronger meaning to some uh, posterior um, missions that we developed, in which you are like inside that one of those fatties or upon one of those uh, ships, you know, world ships. So yeah, uh, yeah, and oh yeah. I don't know, that was pretty much it. Do you have any, any memories about playing this level back well, in the day when it still was oh, in development? Um, yes, but I, I, I think it's, it's very near that I, I play since the, since the beginning of, the, of this, this mission, I, as I remember. I oh, sorry. <laughs> Okay. No, no. Can I interrupt you though? Because yeah. I feel I really don't want to bother you that much because I see it's kind of difficult this much. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Provo 1 or Provo Lone Ranger ask a really good question. Does Breath of Hope layout change depending on difficulty? No, not at all. Actually, it's just like a pseudo uh, uh, 
a random algorithm, you know. There are like, I think there are like five different layouts and, and it chooses uh, different layouts depending on which one of the three phases that you are in. And I think there, there were some uh, constraints to that. I think in the last phase, which is the longest phase of all, because the first two phases are kind of like introductory to the, uh, to the mission and, and, and they are like way shorter, or at least they are meant to be way shorter than the third one. On that third one, I think we narrowed the, the randomness of the, of the algorithm, so it would choose among the three of those five, you know, among the three that we felt were more interesting, taking into account which one of the monoliths you have to overload and where, which one of the sites uh, uh, are, is used for uh, looters, by looters, in order to get out of the level. So nothing, not related to difficulty at all. So yeah, ha, uh, here we have Benji Wala. Hey Benji, how are you? Hi. So he's asking, or she's asking, uh, have you considered adding additional layers for the monolith phase, for this one phase? I feel like there are only like two or three versions for final and they don't feel too different. I think you're maybe right with the two or three uh, versions uh, comment. I think I didn't check the code in quite, in quite a while because <laughs> we, we developed this so... Uh, so so much time ago but yeah i think it's like two or three about them feeling different it actually what we found during our play, play testing sessions that it mainly depends of the kind of role that you have during that third mission because for instance when i i'm playing constantine on on that mission or maybe kuzman uh, there's like some, uh, you know, uh, valid strategies to just uh, stay near the monolith and just defend it. So when you're just defending the monolith, it's not like super different uh, the way that the, the uh, layouts feel. Why? Because all layouts had to respect the monolith, uh, all the monolith's uh, positions. So near the monolith, there's, there's not like too much... Uh, weird stuff, you know, like too, too many parapets or too many uh, um, things that could uh, help you tell them apart. But if you move around the scenery, uh, there are like different pads and sometimes you are like more exposed in some of the combinations. In some other combinations you have like more tunnels. So it's, so yeah, I don't know. It's kind of, it wasn't really a question, but so yeah, oh, we have Salos here. Hey Salos, how are you? So oh. why are the looters coming out of the cracks in the ground rather than running to the middle of the map below the orb? This pools of Aleph where you can drop and kill yourself and steal Aleph from there. Is there some lore behind that decision? When we build this mission, the, um, uh, the, uh, the, I don't know how to say this, in the founding idea or the, the initial idea for it was that uh, the looters would, uh, take Aleph from uh, this kind of uh, container structures, container-like structures that were used by the ancient local civilization in order to uh, perform like rituals and stuff. So uh, actually that orb that's in the center that keeps forming as you keep progressing on the, on the, um, on the stages is it's it's kind of like the key in order to uh, open the door or the portal to the to the inner sanctum it's not like this orb you can catch the orb and it's like 20 aleph overloads it, it wasn't meant like that so what why do they come from holes well the thing is that this huge hugely vertical structure even though you're in just like a, you're seeing just a little layer of it if you take a closer look to the uh, intro cutscene it's like a huge cylinder it's like you know there's like uh, how, I don't know how to say it. It's like different uh, levels, you know, even though you're just remaining in, in one that could be like the central, the main one. So what we wanted it to feel, since they are not Hades Division or or uh, Fifth Council, the looters are, are uh, Umber War Dogs, they kind of behave like rats. They get into the holes in the ground and get to some other rooms that you may not be seeing at the moment. But what they do is that they take the alley from this container like, uh, uh, you know, like structures or buildings or artifacts. And actually, that's why we show during the initial cutscene, we show one of the... Uh, Whoa. One of the... Man, that was quick. Yeah. <laughs> one of the uh, structures like that getting raided. 
So actually, I had some some things to say about that last phase, but I'll just say it now. So yeah, in the inner sanctum, which is the section that Berto just played, yeah, expertly played, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 amazingly played. I'm very... So yeah, what one thing that's that yeah that that's also like a, usually a problem in this kind of game, like shooter games, like cover-based shooter games, is like things falling from the sky are usually uh, trouble. And yeah. when I say things falling to the sky, I'm not referring to grenades, but when thing, something falls from the sky and you have to use it afterwards, which is the case of the Guardians, you know, because you have to shoot them down and then when they come to the ground, you have to overload them with Aleph. That's usually uh, uh, a bigger problem than what it initially may seem. Why? Because uh, if they fall to the ground just like that whenever you kill them, the thing is that uh, they there are like a lot there are high a really high probability that they may they may end up uh, falling in a not valid place. There are many places in which it can be really uncomfortable or frustrating to have a usable item. You know what I mean? If you have to overload something that's like up on a parapet and you have to go up to the cover or to the parapet and try to overload it but you don't have enough space and you get pushed and it's like really messy so if you guys i don't know if you guys realize but uh instead of just falling to the ground whenever you down a guardian they enter uh somewhat like an agonizing kind of phase yeah. in which actually they keep uh, moving searching for a valid position and they don't fall to the ground until they do find a valid position to fall down so just think guys like how complex can it be to just let something fall well sometimes it can get really complex if you wanted to make it you know comfortable for the player and and to not have uh cases that uh, may become uh, messy you know when it comes to control and all that stuff so yeah that was one of the things and also like i think it's really interesting from a, a visual design uh a point of view maybe from a story point of view like the design of the guardians yeah. and and if you think about it uh, guardians are uh, throughout all the missions of the game they are the only final bosses that are not either uh, military machinery yeah. or like huge monsters you know they are actually something different and I, I really like that this is something that you can actually tell from the visual design it's not like they have you know, like cannons pointing on you or, or like huge uh, teeth, you know, trying to bite yeah. your ass. It's not something like that. It's more, it, they have like a ceremonial look. Yeah. And and that's totally tied to the story because, you know, these kind of uh, guardians are meant to uh, to guard like holy places. And, and back in the old days of the local civilization, it's not like they would necessarily get used, you know, during wars but more like you know like a church like kind of guardians like uh, honorific guards you know so i really like that they feel really different yeah, yeah. and even mysterious like yeah and the um this perfect mix between this um uh, uh, just queue yeah? yeah keep okay. queuing and we'll keep talking about the guardians yeah. or whatever the the perfect mix b between the the stone that they weigh were made and um, I like very much because this is not like you like you say um, an animal or something like that okay um, yeah, I this. Know that. yeah yeah now we can speak <laughs> 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 so yeah it's really different and actually to me it has like a, a bit of a different vibe because at the f at first it's like you're not like totally sure these guys are gonna attack you like they don't look like super aggressive no, no. I mean, no. then afterwards they do attack. I you, think it's course, the like. opposite instead. Ah, you, they yeah, seem yeah. friendly to you. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. The ceremonial uh, stones that that flies on on the mission. Uh, mm. um, I like very much because this is not uh, you saw, and and I think on the first time that it's not gonna kill me, but it's one of the deadliest uh, enemies of the of the game. That's right. And what's also cool about that is that it kind of lets you see what this world of looters may have uh, encountered when they, you know, uh, got into the cracks on the ground and, and went searching for all of, you know, in these huge uh, alien structures, you know, like they maybe they encountered traps like this or these uh, guardian like entities so they wouldn't get the Aleph. 
So yeah. it's kind of cool because at first you see like the war dogs getting all the other, and then you kind of get a taste of what they may have encountered during these ruins. It kind of reminds me of the uh, of these sort of traps that they found in the you know inside the pyramids and all that stuff like so that yeah like really ornamental and really beautiful but deadly yeah. at at the same time you yeah, know? yeah 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 so it's kind of like the same idea i really like that it's not military not monsters something yeah. different is the is the classy enemy that you would say on movies of the 80s like indiana jones or something like that yeah you know something that would come up from a temple yeah so we have more questions. We have Twitch Prime Adol on TV. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, did you experiment with Aleph crystals appearing at random coordinates of the map? Actually, no, we didn't. And we back in the past, we tried to. Uh, we actually we already experimented with some of uh, uh, you know like pickable items spawning on random positions on a map, and. For us, it doesn't feel like a really great idea, even though at first we were trying like another kind of, uh, of items, but because of it's a really similar um, issue to the ones that I, the one that I commented about guardians falling to the ground, like uh, you can totally make an algorithm that spawns like uh, uh, gems within uh, you know a space, but in a random positions. But sometimes you will get like really uncomfortable or not intuitive uh, places so we prefer to have like some fixed uh, spawning positions even though we can our system lets us change uh, among different groups of them in real time and during missions and all that stuff but we wanted to have a tighter control actually also because it it it's like a there's like a direct connection between uh alef gems uh, spawn uh, positions and uh, the design of each one of the missions and levels so sometimes you can even guess like what's the intention intention behind having all gems spawning here or all gems spawning to this some other place so so yeah we we really didn't think like random positioning uh, would work well so okay <laughs> So there's a message for you, Berto. Okay. Like, I will, I will pull up. I will pull up. He's saying, I'm antagonizing with Alicia right now just to make Berto proud. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I hope you are proud of this yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, very proud. So, yeah, we are in, in, in shock. Yeah. We are in shock right now. Do you I'm feel the shock? Are yeah, you in yeah, shock? I, I'm in shock right now, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I am too. So, what about InShock? There's so many things about InShock because we took so many time to develop InShock because it was one of the first levels that we ever developed. But you know, this is some really crazy things that we did for this level. Like in the beginning, you know, from a really abstract point of view, uh, what we wanted to do with this level, it was like, oh, here's like a final boss combat who oh. is this Kuzman guy. But before the final boss, there's like a closed door. And you need to grab some keys in order to open the door, like a really basic mission structure. So, when we ask for the uh, for some uh, like concept art for the level um, to the art department, they came with the idea of the door not being like an actual door, but the door being like a huge octopus-like um, fifth council unit that would become the beholder and and you know it was so visually speaking so stunning that we said okay let's go with this this will be our door so the beholders are uh, the beholder over there is just like uh, you know like blocking the path in order to get Kuzman so story wise it made total sense you know instead of Kuzman just hacking some door so that you cannot go in why not bring a beholder so it it kind of, um, it's kind of like a like a guard dog, you know. So that was the initial concept. So uh, following this concept, you were not supposed supposed to fight that, that door, right? Doors, you you don't usually kill doors in video games. It's not that common. Um, so what uh, what the beholder was meant for? It was just like blocking your path, and you know, since it looks so intimidating, that's where the whole, uh, uh, you know, like. Um, 
laser thin came in because it's deadly and you cannot forget about its position. So, but at the beginning you were really not supposed to kill it. So instead of uh, you know finding the keys, which was like the initial concept, we what we developed is like oh you maybe you have to go and you know like uh, disable each one of the tentacles you know by shooting at them. And we we had this concept for quite a while, and there there was some great stuff about it. But uh, even though the length of the level and everything was correct, it it felt kind of I don't know. It was a bit a bit of a letdown to have this beautiful, you know, magnificent uh, monster here, but not fighting against him. But the thing is that we had we already had like a boss fight in this level. Why have two boss fights? But then after a while, we went like why not having two boss fights on a level what's the matter so we developed some new technology back in the day so that the beholder could start moving once you had uh, killed all the tentacles and that's how the uh how it became like a boss encounter but you know initially it was meant to be like a huge door <laughs> it was just like a door so it, this is a really unexpected transition you know like from a door like going from a door to a final boss uh, form it's like uh, now that I think about it, it's it's kind of crazy, but it was really fun though. And and yeah, actually, you can, I think there are like uh, some clues on why, on 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 the beholder being still because you know back in the day when you didn't have to shoot at the core of the beholder, he wouldn't move. He he it would just stay like that. So at the beginning, if you if you take a look to the beholder, it's not like right on the center of the bridge. It's kind of like displays like a few meters to the left, you know, when you when you just enter to the bridge to the level and you see the holder. It's not like fully centered, since it wasn't meant to move. Uh, the thing is that we started with a really uh, uh, with a different kind of position, really centered, you know, in the bridge. And even though it looked great, the thing is that it, there would be so many. Uh, like dead angle spots. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but you know, spots in the level or areas in which uh, the beholder wouldn't have, you know, like a line of contact so it could shoot you and it would make parts of the level like excessively uh, safe, you know. So that's why we displaced it a little bit so that it could not only point at players that are walking on the bridge, but also it could point at players that were, you know, on the left side of the bridge, on the lower zone of the level. So that's why it's looking like that, no? Because back in the day, we didn't have the option to make it move, and so, but afterwards, you know, since now it moves and it moves through the whole level, that wouldn't be necessary none right now. And if my memory is not failing, I think that when you uh, kill the beholder and you get this really cool cutscene in which the beholder falls. I think it kind of falls like in its initial place, like in this position, because it was never meant to move. But I, I'm not sure on that because there were like many iterations on cutscenes too. So I maybe we, we can check it when 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 Alberto kills it. So yeah, yeah and I, the, I'm trying to kill. Oh, but you're doing yeah. fine, right? Oh, there's I, a survive so, face. Yeah. There's no antagonist, so no excuse no, for no, you. No. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I don't have excuse. <laughs> So yeah, is that ah oh, any reasons? Yeah, Benji Benjiwala, he's a, or she's asking any reason uh, as to the positioning of some tentacles. Some are near, unreachable for some characters. Yeah, there is actually. Back in the day, we would we were. We were experimenting, with this concept of uh, you know having to uh, bring down different parts of the body of a huge of a huge monster that would spread, you know, its tentacles uh, along different zones of the level. It was kind of like uh, a renewed version of the whole key finding quest. And we, you know, in the beginning, we just tried different stuff like, oh, some tentacles are really, really close to where the players move, like just on the bridge. Some other tentacles are like really in really weird positions that only Herrick, for instance, would be able to, to reach. And at the end, we realized that it was way more, um, uh, it was less, uh, I don't know how to say, it. it was more comfortable if we 
if we could uh, guarantee that at least one of the, for the players, you know, that at least one of the tentacles would be uh, damageable from a really short range. Because back in the day, we didn't have anything that would guarantee it. So maybe, I don't know, you were playing with a really short range characters in your team, and you would get the last tentacle would be like a really far away one. And it was it was really not the way we wanted the game to feel. We really didn't want the game to be like excessively uh, strict when it comes to the uh, to solving the puzzle of sorts of having to choose one or another character in a level. So we developed a, a system, a logical system, so that even though uh, ah you have surrendered, no, I'm I'm not. <laughs> ah, your team surrendered though. Yeah, the team You weren't doing bad though. You were already in the phase of the <laughs> of killing the beholder. So yeah. yeah. So, the thing is that uh, yeah, I, I got lost on on my reasoning here. But yeah, I don't know what I was saying. But I guess it was really interesting. But I lost track of it. <laughs> oh, but yeah, whatever. So. Yeah, it's like Gia. You have a question of Gia G Gamer three thousand. Like Eran Alberto, most players have requested for characters abilities configuration. This is Mercury Steam's plans. Um, I'm not sure what characters abilities configuration mean, but when it comes to uh, talent cards uh, like character and uh, faction uh, based uh, talent cards. We will be having a rework of uh, the unlocking system on the next upcoming update patch, which is uh, Heavy Metal. Yeah. And we we are not still going into detail, but the thing is that the new system will allow for a more control, you know, a more controlled way of uh, unlocking the different talents. So um, we are aiming uh, so that uh, you guys can try more talents that you can right now and and not being afraid of you know like trying different talents because right now the system kind of um can be a bit uh unforgiving when you're trying when you want to try something new but you don't want to lose what you do the ones that you already have so yeah uh it's it kind of goes into that direction so i don't know if that answers your, your answers your question but i guess it's kind of yeah, like that and i i think it's it's gonna be more friendly for the users oh yeah, yeah way more friendly so yeah let's do hanging by a thread though yeah because we we spent so much time already okay on so the, yeah but on about kuzman user. though i can i totally can explain some stuff about kuzman you know it was the first final boss that we ever built and you know, it was the first time that we were trying to do like, like different uh, boss-like attacks. You know, that that would cover like huge areas of the map. You know, when Kuzman goes to the tower and and just uh, electrifies really big zones of the map, and we really liked the result. We weren't that sure at first that that would be working as well as it does. So we kind of re reused the, the same philosophy for some of uh, General Marmalade's attack in um, in later missions. And you know, in that uh, that was also the first time that we decided to uh, make, uh, you know, to, to have one of the NPCs turned into a playable character. It wasn't like super planned from the beginning, but at some point we realized that would be uh, really cool uh, from a story point of view. And also, you know, we could see like uh, many people that would play against Kuzman, even though he's kind of despicable because he's like the bad guy. Even though even though he's bad, he would, uh, you know, like uh, some people would like fall in love with him. Like, I want to know more about Kuzman. I really want Kuzman to appear more in the game. So we thought, oh, why not playing as him, you know, and having like dialogue lines for him for all the campaigns and you know, and 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 that that really works as well. So we did the same stuff later, you know, for both Schneider and Aneska, as you already know, and also like. You know, like back in the day, when we were like building like uh, the levels from the ground up, sometimes we would need, in order to give context, we would need to uh, have voice lines for the game, even though we still haven't hadn't got like the final version for the texts or whatever. So we would just record ourselves, like it's <laughs> different people in the company would record like different characters, 
and back in the day, I gotta say that I was Kuzman for a while. Yeah, I remember and, and, that. And that was scary because some people wouldn't recognize that it was me. It was like, ah, oh, that's not your voice. Come on, don't fool me. No, no, that's really me. Because I was trying to make like a really evil voice. And that was weird because I, I, would, I would be testing so much stuff and yeah. I would keep hearing my voice all the time, all the time. It kind of, it kind of gets you a bit, yeah, you're, you're a bit mad when you're Your <laughs> voice like was that. very creepy when I play the, the I game. I was acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. trying. I remember that and, and it's... Yeah. it's I think it was creepier way. though than the final result because <laughs> Kuzman is kind of nice yeah. but I was being like a really bad guy when it yeah. comes to boys acting. So yeah. But that was That's fun because you could listen to different people's voices in the placeholder uh, dialogue. So yeah. Oh yeah, and there's a really random uh, piece of information that, you know, back in the day, in the really old days, when uh, when we were designing the uh, the Cosman combat, you know, after you beat Cosman, you were supposed to go like past the door that's like behind him, and go for an extraction phase, and Cortez would be waiting for you uh, on the Beluga. But at the end, and and I think there's kind of like some uh, visual mesh for that. I think there's like a 3D models of some kind of hallway that goes like uh, behind that door. But at the end, we realized it was more powerful to end the level just when beating the boss. It would also let Kuzman shine, you know, way more because it has its own, uh, you know, defeat cuts in and, you know, they kick the head and yeah. all that stuff. So we felt like there was really no need to, you know, to do anything uh, more after that. And, uh, and another really random piece of info, mm -hmm. if you get really close to the uh, structure that Kuzman is electrifying, you can see Shay in there, yeah. which I'm not sure many people saw that because you have to get really close. But even even more random piece of info, it's not it's not her full body in there. You cannot see it from the <laughs> angle, but it's just like the, the head and just a bit of the neck. And that that was, of course, of uh, because of performance uh, reasons, you know, you really try to save uh, polygons here and there, but it's kind of creepy when we were developing that and we would see just a floating head at the beginning we didn't have all the models. That was a bit weird. Is the, the sister of Dr. Goodman here. Oh yeah, that, yeah. it was kind of cosmo like yeah. That was even more creepy. <laughs> because, oh, he cut, he, 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 he got her hair. Like, yeah. yeah, it was, I don't know. So weird. So, uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Like, Enzia, hi, I saying, Hernan, do your best Kuzman voice impression, please. It was a really different Kuzman, really evil. It, uh, not, not, nothing like him. And it was in Spanish, too, because we would record some yeah. of the voices in Spanish. I don't know why we did that, but I guess it was easier. Or maybe the game wasn't translated yet. I don't know. It was so, 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 so long ago. But no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember. No, I, how I, did I sound? Yeah, I only it's remember so your years. your Spanish voice. Uh, try to speak like a like a, I don't a know. It was like where are you, Raider? <laughs> like that. Not not accent at all. I, I didn't even know that the guy was yeah. like had like an Eastern accent or something like that. Uh, aren't they running on a debt bill, not public? No, no, no. You no. mean Lord Draco? Like right now, we are we are playing, playing on on a the game just like PlayStation you. 4 right now. Yeah. yeah, that's how we are playing today. So school of schoolocalypse schoolocalypse schoolocalypse. Oh, he has a question for us. Hi, schoolocalypse. Hi. School. Hi. Uh, are you gonna rework the faction and character cards? Yes, we are totally reworking. Uh, mainly the unlocking system and all the economy based around those two and uh, we are trying to uh, get away of the RNG uh, philosophy of the previous system and try to yeah. do something uh, that feels more rewarding but since we are still developing it because it will be it will ship uh, if everything goes well it will be part of the uh, of the Master of Puppets of Date, but mm -hmm. we're still not getting into detail because I might say something now that may change like during the following weeks. So I'd rather not uh, you know, like confuse you guys with uh, uh, temporarily valid information. But yeah, whenever the update gets closer to release, we'll go into detail as we always do. So yeah, okay. Oh, we are hanging by a thread already, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hanging by a thread. Wow, that was a really, really complex development because you know it was like the first level that we ever made, the first mission that we ever built, and 
the game was not like fully defined yet when it comes to mechanics but you know back in the day as we kept develop developing the different phases of the hanging by a thread mission and connected them the result was an extremely long mission uh, some of the playthroughs would take like I don't know, like 45 minutes or sometimes like an hour it was a really really long piece of action and as we kept uh, polishing it we kept like you know taking things here and there that weren't really needed like for instance like when you arrived and you saw Lycus you know ha they're hanging from a crane you know that uh, there's like a, whenever, right now, whenever you arrive, it's like Lycos starts moving towards a platform that goes down really fast. Back in the day, the platform, you would have to like uh, call for the elevator and you would have to wait for the platform to get down as you would kill swarms of enemies. And only afterwards, Lycos would start moving really slowly. And you had like these sets of uh, buttons and levers spread through the uh, level so you would press them in order to speed things up and you know of course the antagonist was able to you know like uh, sh uh, like switch them off and stuff but as we kept uh, as we kept uh, polishing hanging by a thread as a whole and we we started taking things out that would make the level way too long that's one of the things that kind of fell uh, down because uh, we, we shortened the this phase so there really was no need to speed things up you know actually uh, right now is like the shortest uh, in, in most of difficulties and uh, tweakings and this this phase is like the shortest of, of them all even though engineers can can you know like switch uh, the system off and, and pause like us but even though it's way way faster than some other sections on this same mission and you know back in the day when we were first developing the engineers we had a bit of uh, we were kind of worried that we would have uh, enemy entities in the game that wouldn't be able to attack you those were the engineers and you know for a while there there was this idea that engineers would have like I don't like infinite hammers in their pockets or hammers or tools you know that they, they use for for their work and whenever a uh, raider was at sight they would just you know like take out a hammer and throw it to you and they would have like dozens of hammers in their pocket mm. <laughs> so but you know at the end we n didn't even develop that that was just like a concept idea you know but at the end we realized th there was actually nothing wrong with having enemies that cannot harm you since they can be you know uh, they can be evil doing their own thing and it's actually like more interesting to have some people that you know it's dangerous some people that you know it's not uh, like directly dangerous but indirectly dangerous because they can slow you down so you can uh, prioritize which which kinds of enemies you you uh, you prefer to attack at, at, at each one of the uh, at, at each moment you know and that's like a richer decision instead of having everyone being able to harm you directly so yeah so yeah why did you remove multiple terminals I I'm guessing you're uh, we're uh, you're uh, Benji well, by the way <laughs> I'm guessing you're asking about the multiple terminals that you had to uh, activate like in order to speed things up yeah as I said it was as we kept uh, making things uh, shorter we felt like it was a piece that added complexity but not necessarily change, uh, you know, duration time so much because we we still, even though it, it now it's way shorter than it used to be because that was like 10 minutes uh, way back in the day, just you know during the little screen phase. Uh, even though we shortened it up, we still need some time in order to have enemies appear and enemies use storage and all that stuff. So there really we feel like there's really no need to speed things up even more at the moment also like we could we can also see that by gathering that data from everyone's matches and trying to make all levels you know last um, within a, a given threshold of, of, of time you know and this section over here it was really interesting because it was the first time we were developing like an outdoors level that uh, took part in, in a ship's deck 
and you know when we first uh, developed it everything was a steel because we felt oh this is a really huge ship so things should like the horizon should not be moving right it's not like you are in a little ship but after a while we felt like it it could the, the level could use some kind of movement in some way but you know because of uh, technical uh, difficulties and also because of uh, optimization uh, um, uh, issues it's really not a good idea for us to move uh, to actually move the level in which you're playing in so we developed a really cool trick and what we do is every, even though you may see that the ship is you know kind of drifting a little bit like this what's going what's actually going on is the ship is the only thing that's not moving at all so what we do is we take everything else you know like the sky and the the other ship in the background and the camera itself and we apply the same movement to all of those entities but you know we leave the ground we it just remains still you know and if when there's like an optical illusion that happens when you do that because since your own camera is moving you know in the same fashion as the other elements of the world you feel like it's the ground that it's moving like this and not everything else so that's a really cool trick that uh, we developed and we actually use that trick again in each one of the other instances in which you have to uh, you know like uh, get into a ship's deck and fight your way through it like a defender of worlds or the uh, the mission with the fatties and all the stuff we use the same like not exactly the same trick because there were like there were like uh, different requirements in each one of the levels but it was just like uh, like little adjustments or changes that we had to make to the already previous uh, developed system so yeah so uh, ah, Saldors is asking, what made you change the layout of the stage that comes after the rockets break the pipes? Actually, that's really cool because that's a level and mission iteration that took part when the game was already being played by people. And you could see it back in the day in the, uh, in the patch notes and everything. And that was, you know, back in the day we would just have like, you would call for the elevator and just wait again. And like a, like a ship would appear and it would like throw missiles at you and you had to you had to uh, stay there and survive and there were like a few issues with that all uh, of mission philosophy one of those what was that again uh, hanging by a thread was still a bit too long so we we retweaked the uh, the speed in which uh, at which uh, the Lycus screen moves and now we also thought okay this this stage over here you just have to wait like a fixed amount of time and you know we started reducing that amount of time so th that the level would would uh, last less but you know things start uh not making any sense if you make it too short because we we, we need some time in order to get the ship up here and and bomb uh, the place up so we decided to change the the philosophy of that part of the mission and you just have to you know get to the there's like a kind of like a little fortification with a lot of grunts that won't move from they from their position and they are you know just waiting for you with the uh, turrets and the shields and you just have to go by you know, and just cross all enemy, enemy lines and go over there it's way more agile and not only faster potentially faster but also it lets people play in different ways whenever you just have like a static amount of time that you have to wait it's all about surviving but it, there's no way you can optimize time by being better or, or by playing with a, you know with a given um, with a certain type of a loadout or character you just have to wait and we felt like it was more fair to the different kind of players to just have a more flexible mission approach you know not make people wait a fixed amount of time but let them play the way they want if you're like a slower paced uh, kind of a uh, player and you play like with the slower characters it's okay and if you're really fast and you want to finish as soon as possible 
you can totally do that with the new uh, the new mission philosophy so yeah and yeah here we are already at the main reactor uh, overload phase and uh, sorry is the yeah Sergei Kuzinski hey Sergei is asking like is there gonna be other map reworks in the future I'm not sure but uh, like right now we're focusing on retweaking some of the uh, of the maps not necessarily like reworking them like we already if I'm not mistaken we already in the latter uh, Master of Puppets update we already changed a little bit of the uh, beholder regenerator beholder uh, life values or, or regeneration values uh, from the mission the mouse and the snake and we are currently working in, in trying to uh, polish that even more and we are also trying for uh, beholders in the mouse and the snake to uh, have like a slightly different uh, move pattern so they are more easily uh, uh, damaged by a uh, short shorter range uh, weapons but we're still working on that so yeah i guess we 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 keep analyzing like data from the matches and we keep we try to keep improving uh, uh stuff like here and there from different uh, stages but it's not like we are like focused on that you know we are more focused into delivering the roadmaps contents and probable one, probable one ranger uh, asks who designed the capture device that Lycus is being held in and inside of it. Um, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I, I yeah, well, it was. I was really not involved in that, but it was like the classic uh, uh, communication between you know the concept art department and design departments, oh. and it. It's you know it's actually designed so that story-wise, you have like this funny cutscene at the end in which Lycos just breaks it like that and he is like wearing no clothes at all and all that stuff. But I'm I really don't know the details on that. Sorry, you know. So yeah, about this one, that that's something that we that also experienced this phase also experienced some changes, you know. And there's actually there's something that we never actually made the uh, mission logic for that but we did have like some uh, models for it for some visual mesh for it there was, there was like a, even like another section of the of the level you know after you blew up the main reactor it's like you blew up the main reactor and you would go uh, into another sort of deck like a really smaller one and i and i think there was some idea that you had to uh, wait uh, for Cortez to arrive there while everything was exploding and such but that never that really never got too far into development because the level was already extremely long and you know there's something that you know the conclusion of level of different missions are really important and sometimes you know having less stuff happening is better like less is more are we that's a saying that we have here in spain so we felt like it was like more cathartic to just have you know the reactor blow up and you just you know you go to a quarter ship and just uh teleport back to the ship and everything blows up and that was like a really like perfect action set piece we didn't need to you know water it down and have like another section you know why 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 having more stuff it's not always uh, better so but yeah that's something that i almost had forgotten you know i had to look into this because it was so so long ago so yeah jake lionheart is 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 has something for you berto has anybody said anything about how cool Alberto oh. Schiff is? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I had a notice. It's full of, of mini Dr. Kuzman. I mean, yeah, I see yeah. some the Kuzman, Kuzman yeah. skull here. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. So, yeah. Well, you won. Yeah, I'm, I'm the feature player. You're the feature player, too. Okay. We, and we're not cheating, by the way. This no, is no, the no, actual no. build right, that you right, are right, opening. And a, so. and a trophy that <laughs> we earn. Wow. You, you <laughs> yeah. really are. Wow. Good. 
<laughs> so Sergey has another question for us. Uh, will wheel map still have different numbers based on MMMR? If you're, uh, I guess, when you say numbers, you're referring to different uh, tweaking on different values of variables that affect the mission somehow. Yes, uh, all missions have that, and uh, it affects so many stuff besides the AI. You know, like um, for instance, like. Uh, you know, when you are on like a screen phase, for instance, and, and there's like an engineer using the terminals, I, I, I guess you already noticed, you know, as uh, the higher the, the MMR is, you know, the shorter time that they use the terminal and they can uh, more easily, you know, like uh, make uh, your progress stop. So that's one of the, uh, Actually, that's one of the cool things about MMR, that it's not only about damage and such, it also affects mission progression. So you have to not have like a better weapon and just deal more damage, but play better in... When I say better, I mean with a better strategy sometimes. It's just, okay, so there's the terminal, so I know these guys can use the terminal really quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have like a friend protect the terminal, maybe with, I don't know, like Suma's uh, Redeemer or something, or if I'm using Kuzman or I'm just staying here to make things sure and you know my other three bodies will be doing another thing but when your MMR is really low and you really have like a no experience playing the game this kind of uh, thinking can be like way too complex so you still it's still better if you play like that but you 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 will have more time in order to react you know So, question, Mr. Potato 666, <laughs> like a satanic potato here. So, does Mercury Sim ent Entertainment look at fan concepts? I have made two concepts. I feel they would be nice additions to the game. I don't expect them to be in the game, but it would be nice to know if you have seen them. I'm not sure about Mr. Potato's concepts. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't I, remember. We, we do uh, uh, s uh, take a look at so many... Uh, cool fan art like the ones that we have displayed yeah, here all the but there's like fan art coming in like i don't know in a weekly basis for sure and and Berto and i f for instance because we we work uh, really close one from each other we yeah. sometimes comment like when when we see like some new art like on twitter or or on the uh, f um there's like a fan content channel on the unofficial discord right yeah fan content that's the name yeah and we we always comment like oh look at this anesco or look at this uh soma or look at this yeah, yeah. so yeah we usually see them i don't remember about all all, your, all uh, the people uh, comment the, the fan art on the on the office when we saw uh yeah like current too is yeah. usually like like uh, looking at it yeah it's, it's look, uh, look here this is great uh, i love it yeah. uh, and we we love to to see all the all the fan content uh, it's, it's, it's so it's, cool it's, it's so, so cool. cool yeah yeah i mean it's totally how can you not love it yeah. like you're working on a video game and fan yeah. comes and and you see the characters that you've been you know you've known to uh, love and respect and you see them i don't know like wearing like fancy hats or sometimes you know they're like uh, themed you know like christmas themed or whatever yeah. that's really cool i mean how can we not look at that so yeah question from lord draco hey why was constantine's bubble changed to make him invincible to all cqc a common tactic was always grab players that were bubbled and they and their only counter was to punch now the bubble is nearly a guaranteed kill so yeah, uh, Constantine's bubble uh, used to have like a, I don't know how to say it in English, like a time in which it would still not uh, affect a player. If I think if the player had hadn't had been uh, affected by it like really recently, so sometimes you could get hit inside the bubble. Yeah. Honestly, I really. I'm really not into character tweaking <laughs> and I'm not really well aware of this change made to Constantine but I guess if it's such a precise question we if we could please uh, not erase it but save it for later maybe we can try to get the guy yeah. that's more in charge of it and maybe we, we can answer it on our official forum so please if, if, if you could 
if you could uh, I'm not asking to you guys but to our uh, streaming guy here if we could save it for later that's a really good question but I'm afraid if I answer now it may be such an imprecise answer that maybe it's not worth it just let's answer it uh, properly later yeah next week so yeah so uh, we have something but more like Berto has something yeah I have you something guys, right yeah maybe you have like a world exclusive yeah it's a like world that. exclusive what is it uh, well, uh, I'm going to announce that we have a new weapon for one Space Lord uh, next week. And it's a weapon for uh, Rack, Rack Mayura. It's a, it's a weapon that called Pheromon. Um, it's very special for me. I, I think it's very cool because um, the... The weapon, the bullets of the weapon were infected with the blood of a, a mysticetic blood. This is a strange animal on, on the Space Lord's uh, world. Um, and this weapon make more vulnerable the enemies that... Uh, more vulnerable and the, um, and the strikes of Rack and the uh, explosion of the Pisachas uh, are make more damage to all of the enemies and i think is is very it's very very cool to play against the antagonist i think so um, and i'm going to say that the the story behind the this this weapon is that uh, rack uses uh, that uh, mysticity block bluff um the pisachas goes crazy and um, the problem is that uh, Rack himself goes crazy too. Um, with the blood? Yeah, with this blood. Wow. It's, it's some kind of drag. Um, <laughs> like a drag, more yeah. like drag. Yeah. Not, not Rack Mayura, but drag. It's Drag Mayura. Is now Rack um, a vampire now? <laughs> what happened? Some, some kind of, of a strange vampire. Oh, wow. Um, my guess was Lycus. Like, my guess is Lycus is a vampire, you know, with the teeth. Yeah, with uh, these strange teeth. Um, and I, I, I don't know the date, the exactly the date, but uh, I think it's the next week. And uh, well, uh, on the we, we have more information on the uh, on few days. Uh, I okay, think. so it will be dropping next week, but we will, you know, let you guys know the exact date for it, right? Yeah. Okay, that's so cool. That was our world exclusive. Yeah. I really cannot make that voice and really frustrates me, but that was it. So it was really nice hanging out with you guys i hope uh you liked uh everything that we explained to you about the different you know the process of the creation of the different missions maybe some other time we could play a few other missions you know and speak about them but as for today i think we are already i mean with yeah with, we've been live for quite a while so we'll be saying goodbye already we yeah. hope to see you really soon on the broken planet and we also have to thank our sponsors, all right? Yeah, yeah. Thank you for thank you for making the, this the possible. Yeah, and we'll see you in the broken planet. See you, every. I love. Bye. See you, everyone. Yeah. <laughs>